Hello everybody tuning in right now on our Facebook page, Facebook live feed. I am joined in studio today with Patrick Nelson. Pat or Patrick? Either's good. What do you prefer? Uh, I prefer Patrick, especially in Patrick. writing, but okay. let me, I gotta share this myself. Okay. So, yep. So, right there. And then we do, on your page, bada boom. Good call. My partner here just... Now we're live. Now yeah. we're live. We're about to go on the air here in 20 seconds. So. There'll be all kinds of live. Shoot, better be entertaining for people. <laughs> it is a hard knock life. You are here live on Tunes 92.5, 104.5. We are live in studio uh, and you're listening to Watertown Live with Craig and Cody. And I am joined today by a very special guest, Pat Patrick Nelson. And he is running for the New York State's 21st uh, congressional seat against incumbent Elise Stefanik. Welcome. Uh, pleasure to be here, Cody. Real pleasure. And just to be clear, I'm running in a primary. I'm the only opponent announced, but I have to earn the right to run against the congresswoman. So I I'm not overlooking that. For a second, I appreciate that sentiment. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, her supporters do as well. So, uh, what brings you to Watertown today? I know you're you're in town today, yep. and um, uh, so you just announced you, you're running. And we announced uh, January 19th. Okay, which is very early, right? When's when's the ele election day? Uh, the primary would be, I think, the first Tuesday in June. Hasn't been announced yet, but okay. yes, it's absolutely early. But um, the district is so large that in order to get around and actually try and meet with as many people as I feel like I need to in order to be prepared to do the job, I wanted to give myself as much time as possible. And also, we're doing kind of a, a unique campaign strategy where we're tracking bills through Congress and we're commenting on legislation as it's pending okay. to kind of give people an idea of you know what they're going to get if they vote for me. Um, they'll see the analysis over the next two years of how I evaluate laws and how I'll represent the values of the North Country. Okay, interesting approach. I like it. It was new. I mean, so yeah. it was, we were sitting around, it was with my friend Matt, who's sitting over there, um, you know, after the election, probably looking at our wounds a little bit, and, you know, the, the thought was, if I were to run, eh, this is how I'd like to do it. And if I were, suddenly became, well, I guess we're doing this, aren't we? And so now here we are. And it's a pleasure to be here. I mean, this has taken me back to my college days where I was with WRPI uh, in Troy. Okay. Yeah. So it was you probably a, know more about radio than I do. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it was just a sports <laughs> announcer. You know, we do football and hockey games. Okay. And uh, I'm used to working well, without a delay, thank God. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just yeah, great we, to be back in the studio. We don't have a delay here, so I warned Mr. Nelson uh, to not use the F word. Shut the front door. No. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> not that F word, but uh, so, friendship. So where so fiscal where, responsibility? Fiscal responsibility. That's a word you can use here anytime. Um, so where are you? Where are you from? I'm from Stillwater, New York. Stillwater. Okay. So for those for those uh, listening who aren't sure where Stillwater might be, uh, could you kind of give us? Ge oh, absolutely. Geographical so we're eastern Saratoga County, lodged between Saratoga Lake and the Hudson River. Okay. Um, the history of our town is such that the Saratoga National Historical Park is within the town limits, and that is where the battles of Saratoga took place that were the turning point of the Revolutionary War. Okay. Um, battles of Freeman's Farm and uh, oh, Bemis Heights. Uh, Linda Sanders would have been upset at me if I didn't remember those two. <laughs> um, but that's where Burgoyne got chased out, and... Um, it was after that victory that the French got into the war, and that was the real sort of the turning that point. Was turning point. And uh, I, I was hoping it was the turning point of the American Revolution. I'm thinking it might just very well be the turning point of the political revolution as well. Okay. Well, uh, that's that's very interesting. Are you are you, do you uh, double as an historian? Uh, no, but I'm obviously very interested yes, in history. No, I'm I'm kind of a big nerd great. when it comes to that kind of stuff. So <laughs> it's. And, you know, being from Stillwater, that gets ingrained into us all through school. You're from Stillwater, this is where the turning point was. You will remember this because it will define your character. Okay. I like it. So. Watertown has some rich history as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing, I don't think we were involved in any, Craig, Craig doesn't know, and there are no cool battles here in Watertown, but Sackett's Harbor, War mm -hmm. of 1812, yep. uh, that was a site, um, a naval battle mm -hmm. out there in Sackett's Harbor, so that's a cool spot. And, uh, and you're the home to the most deployed in in infantry division we, in the U U.S. Army. We are. 10th yes. Mountain, right? Yeah, Watertown, Fort Drum, home of the 10th Mountain Division, the most deployed uh, unit in the, in the military. I and we, we owe them a debt of gratitude. We do, uh, indeed. Uh, so, 
you you decided to run. Uh, well, first let's let's talk about. You're from Stillwater, mm -hmm. and what do you do now? What's what do you do? What's your day job? Uh, currently, I am special projects coordinator for Assembly Member Phil Steck from the 110th Assembly District. Okay. So, um, if you know where Albany International Airport is, that's the district, and I'm working with him on some legislative and communication stuff, and uh, getting the opportunity to learn firsthand as well how how bills become law and learning the legislative process. So between that and the way we're running the campaign, I think I'm going to be very well prepared to be a, an effective freshman member of the 116th Congress. Okay. And uh, what? how long have you been doing that for? How long have you been I, I started for? this session. Okay. So, right. uh, January. So what, what, what other experience do you have? What other political experience do you have? Well, I was field director on the Mike Derrick Congressional Campaign. Okay. So how I got to know the district really well and know the vastness of it is I had to cover a lot of territory, was managing a staff of about five or six people. You know, if you got phone calls or doors knocked, um, you know, that was my responsibility to organize the volunteers and the staff to get that done. Gotcha. Okay. So you, you, you've done the ground and pound. Indeed. You know what Indeed. it's all about. I, I have okay. worn out a couple of pairs of Converse in all my right. time uh, working for uh, Democrats in the 21st District. All right. Cool. So what what really, uh, what was the deciding factor? What, you know, I know you said you were sitting around, oh, you know, mm -hmm. if I ran, I, I would do this. So what was the point where you said, okay, I'm running? Uh, Is there something that happened? No, it's kind of hard to say that there's a, a bright line there. It's that you continue having the conversation and the vision comes to your head and you have the idea of the way you'd like to see something done and eventually someone should becomes I will. At least it does, does for me. Because you know? I'd rather regret the things that I haven't tried than to have an idea and not follow through on it. So I'm from Saratoga County, so one of the things that's big there is the Saratoga Race Course. Okay, one of the absolutely. finest yes, thoroughbred racing courses <laughs> in of the course, world. Of course, of um, course. Worked there many summers. Um, but I remember one of my first times betting uh, you know, you, you're going through the book, and, and, uh, and I wrote down, it might have been 2-5 exact a box. I don't know what it was. Um, but I wrote it down, and then I talked myself out of it. And I said, um, you know, this is not going to come in. The five horse, the, 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 the odds are too long. This isn't going to happen. So I didn't place the bet. And you know what comes in, 2-5 exact a box, and I'm out like 200 bucks. <laughs> so in that experience, it's once you've had the idea... You know, you, it, you owe it to yourself to follow through on it and see where it leads. Okay. Because you I, might be, I, might get lucky. I know that feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, uh, as, you know, deciding to run for city council there, yeah, I definitely uh, had, had some of those same feelings. So um, I, I, can, I can definitely relate. Uh, so what is, uh, are, there, are there certain um, issues that, that really hit home for you? I mean, what are the most important issues to you? Well, the most important issue to me is the most important issue on planet Earth right now. Okay. Which is climate change. Though it is cold enough outside right now that I'm almost rethinking my yeah, position. Yeah, it's 14 degrees. It, 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 is, it, is, it is bitter. <laughs> uh, it takes the, uh, the, the, the uh, energy right out of you when the I wind was, blows. I was just getting used to those 60 degree days. Yeah, but and 60 degrees in February, that's an issue. Yeah, you know, I'll take it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you just think about what that does, right? Because it's I the know. killing cold that will stop the pests in the summer and will help the agriculture. So we don't have the cold winter. We're going to have a greater problem of Lyme disease. We're going to have more ticks out there. Um, so we actually need those cold winters as much as it was nice to wear shorts in February. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's cause for concern. Um, it's cause for concern not just in terms of agriculture, in terms of, you know, at-risk property. The Vice had a special on Miami, but also think about lower Manhattan. The sea levels come up. Uh, we're going to have issues there. Okay. Um, and some of this is baked in. No, no. All right. So um, global warming. Mm-hmm. How does that affect the uh, New York 21st Congressional Dis District? Well, it's, it's actually very particular to the New York 21st Congressional District because of the Adirondack Park, and at least according to the climate models that I've read, um, there's going to be less of an overall impact specifically to greater temperatures here, which is going to result in actually a longer growing season, while a lot of the surrounding areas are going to get kind of burnt out with what we kind of saw in California with droughts and higher temperatures. So that means a greater demand for agricultural products um, from the 21st Congressional District area. This is one of, in my mind, the strategic climate reserves of the United States. So it, it pays big to pay attention to climate policy here. And also, the New York's 21st Congressional District happens to be located on planet Earth. Um, so we have some concern there as well. So we need to upgrade our infrastructure okay. so that we can better get those agricultural products to and from market and deal with the fact that we may be seeing some population growth as other Americans come to resettle here when there's less available areas in there. And we're talking about within the century. But if we don't start having the conversation now, we're not going to be prepared to, uh, to handle those challenges. Right, so the argument is that it's about future generations, not just about this one. Well, it's presently happening now. We well, just had February. But yes, it, it's, it's yeah. 
present, we have to make an immediate switch. We have to quit our addiction to fossil fuels and invest in renewable energy. And it also deals with one of the other big issues in this area, which is jobs. And there's plenty of room for wind farms and solar in this area and hydroelectric and geothermal. And with that, we can provide the entirety of what we need for electricity in the United States with renewable resources. It has an added uh, national security benefit and that we're not relying upon foreign oil. And it also helps deal with a major national security issue, which climate change is. When you think about the conflict in the Middle East and Syria, um, one of the participating factors, not the only cause, but was the drought added to the tension and was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back that precipitated the civil war in 2010, 2011. So there's climate change directly impacting uh, national defense policy right before our eyes. Gotcha. Yeah, wow, you're, you're right on top of this. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I guess you have to be when you're running for Congress, well, yeah, you, right? You've got to know what you're talking about. Well, it was a passion. You know, in my life, it, it was politics was always kind of a distraction for me. So I went to RPI, studied biochemistry and biophysics. Okay. Um, I spent some time as an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley in New York City. Um, but I was always distracted what was going on policy-wise because you could see the impacts, whether it's trying to start a business or just living, uh, dealing with college tuition and debt. Um, so it was always concerning to me. So I figured I'd be better off reorganizing my life such that the thing that was distracting me, the thing that I was procrastinating the other things doing, would become the thing that I was supposed to do because then I'd no longer be procrastinating. Okay. You know, if you're going to spend time watching C-SPAN and the news and reading policy reports, you might as well be have that be part of your productive time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're right on. So we've got, we've got about uh, 60 seconds left. So before okay. we go, um, you know, how can people learn more about Patrick Nelson? Yes, yeah, so we're at nelsonfornewyork.com. It's Nelson for NY, F O R N Y. If you spell New York, it'll redirect. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube. And you can see some of the bills we've already commented on, which was we didn't get a chance to get to it. Um, but the American Health Care Act, we've got a pretty good analysis there. Of It's basically the Affordable Care Act. If you didn't like it, you won't like this because it's a worse version. The mandate's less stringent, the subsidies are lower, and it's going to cause people to lose health care. And if there is a death spiral, this is only going to make it worse. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. But, um, all right, so, so we're running out of time. It's uh, nelson4ny.com. Mm -hmm. uh, find him on Facebook. Uh, we've got plenty of time. So when is, when is Election Day? Uh, well, the primary is going to be early June 2018. Um, and then okay. we'll be in November 2018. 2018. So we've got some time. So we've, so, got, we've got plenty of time to get to know Patrick Nelson, get to know the issues, yep. and uh, hopefully we have some healthy debate between uh, you and uh, our sitting uh, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. And, and that's, that's what's so great about our country. We can have uh, these healthy debates, mm -hmm. and, um, and move, that's how we move things forward, right? Absolutely. Healthy civil debate on the issues is what we need right now. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for Thanks joining for having me, me today. Cody. And it was great talking to you. you, you you're definitely a wealth of knowledge when it comes to climate change and, and I'm sure on other topics that we really didn't get a chance to get to today. But uh, Nelson4NY.com, go there, uh, learn about the issues, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, um, your opponent in the studio sometime in the next two years. So Cool. Uh, and, and, and then we can get uh, the, you know, the other side of that too. So. All right, thank you so much for coming in, and we've got more coming up here on Watertown Live, so stay tuned to Tunes 92.5, 104.5. Thank you. How did we do? That was good. We went over a couple minutes, but it was, it was great. Yeah, thanks I for think you did great. That's I wish fun. we had more time because um, we had we got that... You uh, did a great job talking about climate change, and I caught myself saying I agree when he's talking about the Affordable Care Act. You guys want to wrap up the Facebook Live video with yeah. any finishing okay. comments? Or? Yeah, so, um, I, yeah, here. Would you like to? Uh, so, so I just want to thank uh, Patrick Nelson for coming in the studio Thanks today. Me, Cody. I wish we had more time to talk about um, more of the issues because we spent a lot of time on climate change, which he seems to be an expert on, um, and we, there, I'm sure there are a lot of other issues that uh, that we could talk about, and well, I'm sure we'll, we'll have you on again sometime soon. Absolutely, happy okay. to come back. All Look right, forward to it. thank you so much, and stay tuned to Tunes 92.5, 104.5 for more from Watertown Live.